This guide is going to take you step by step to walk you through equipment in Monster Hunter World's Iceborne expansion. It will start at the very start of the game and end once you've unlocked the final monsters in the Guiding Lands. Monster Hunter is a pack rats game. You'll want to hoard every upgrade material you can get your grubby little paws on. Every time you see a bone pile or a mining node, you'll want to gather everything to add it to your stockpile. The last thing you want is to be missing some basic upgrade material and have to go hunt it down. Occasionally through upgrading, you may need to go back and gather materials from a lower difficulty tier. Generally, it's easier to push through to the next difficulty tier, and then, if you need lower ranked materials, come back with better gear to farm them then. Farming a high ranked Teostra in high rank gear takes a while, but it's significantly faster and easier to do so in master rank gear. Even entry level master rank gear. Weapons really fall into two categories. Scaling and non-scaling. Scaling weapons are very much gear dependent. They will offer the highest damage output possible, but you'll have to sacrifice a lot of quality of life or defensive skills for these to maximize their effectiveness. You'll have to get maximum handicraft, attack, elemental attack, and critical eye for those to reach their full potential. The other type is non-scaling. These are what you'd consider gear independent. They don't scale as well, but allow you to have more build diversity. There is some overlap across these two types, and sometimes a weapon is both good going all in on the attack skills, and good right out of the box without many. The point of your weapon is to deal damage, full stop. There's not really any argument there. The weapons here are suggestions based on tests for damage output, sharpness, and ease of build. There may be alternative weapon paths that you may prefer. Certain weapons may deal less damage overall, but could allow you to insert an additional armor skill via increased decoration slots. For armor, the gear and setups I've listed are generally what I feel works well with the specific nuances of the weapons. Unfortunately, it's impossible to get everything you want from any single setup. There's often a lot of discussion on meta builds that advocate for pure damage output setups. For a lot of the gear setups in this video, there are a good number of defensive and utility skills. Keep in mind these are just suggestions and you can make deviations if you prefer certain skills over others. If you're starting fresh with Iceborne or coming back after a hiatus, you'll have access to the Guardian Armor once you install Iceborne. While this may not be the most useful set in terms of skills, it is a high rank set with a lot of defensive capability. Its armor value alone is so much higher than the low rank alternatives that it's worth using. Using the Guardian set will let you focus all your materials into upgrading your weapons, instead of having to choose between building new armor or upgrading your weapons. If you're making a new character for Iceborne, the Guardian set should just be an option in the character creator. Otherwise, it should be available in your equipment box as soon as you get into Astera. If you're coming back to an old character, you'll have to go to your room and claim it from the feline attendant via the add-on bonuses menu. Once claimed, put the Guardian armor set on and forget armor exists until you reach high rank. Then we can talk about optional upgrades, but realistically, the Guardian armor set can easily carry you through to master rank. The Guardian armor set is a very defensive oriented set, but it does have the skill Marathon Runner, which is actually quite nice for hammers. Marathon Runner reduces your stamina consumption while doing actions that have continuous stamina depletion. This includes sprinting and while you're charging your hammer. The remainder of the skills are very defensive in nature. You'll get a 30% increase out of your recovery items, plus 50 maximum HP, which is independent from food buffs from the canteen or nutrient items, and Divine Blessing, which will cause you to take reduced damage from hits based on a random chance. These skills, plus its high rank armor value, means you're basically going to coast through low rank. It's kind of disgusting how overpowered it really is. For Hammer, raw damage is king. Elemental scaling has improved on hammers, but raw is still your best option. Hammers suffer from low sharpness, especially in high rank. Increasing the maximum sharpness for the damage multiplier and length of sharpness is a priority. Since hammers favor raw damage, you can get away with really only building one hammer as a kind of catch-all against everything, and generally ignore type weaknesses, since raw is type independent. Elemental Hammer has weak movement values compared to elemental favored weapons like bow and dual blades, so raw should always be the priority. Basically it comes down to this. Everything is weak to raw damage. The main targets will be the Kulu Hammer through early low rank, then we'll upgrade to the Baroth Hammer from mid low to high rank, and then we'll go back to the Kulu Hammer for master rank before the final raw powerhouses become available. Progression is simple, but there will be a few lulls where your sharpness is pretty pathetic. Starting out, use your starting iron hammer and start with your assigned quests. 
Prioritize looking for bone piles and iron ore in the Ancient Forest while you complete your first assigned quests. Jagras of the Ancient Forest and a Kestodon Kerfuffle. This first upgrade is really your choice. You can use iron ore to upgrade your Iron Hammer 1 into an Iron Hammer 2. Alternatively, you'll want to use the bones you gather to build or buy a Bone Bludgeon 1. You should then immediately upgrade this to a Bone Bludgeon 2. Pro tip here, make sure you're selecting the right weapon from the upgrade menu. Selecting any weapon will open up the tree, but if you want to upgrade your Bone Bludgeon 1, it will not work if you've selected to upgrade your Iron Hammer 1. Keep that in mind. The Bone Bludgeon 2 has lower sharpness but higher damage output than the Iron Hammer 2. Realistically, it doesn't really matter what you pick or use here, both will be roughly equivalent. Continue with your next assigned quest, the Great Jagras Hunt, and use your Iron Hammer 2 or Bone Bludgeon 2 to hunt Great Jagras. Then continue with your next assigned quest, Bird Brained Bandit. Kuluyaku has an upgrade. You may have to hunt Kuluyaku multiple times for the materials. If you do, resort to the optional quest to hunt Kuluyaku that should unlock after the assigned quest. Build a Bone Bludgeon 1, and upgrade it to a Bone Bludgeon 2 if you haven't yet. Then use the Kuluyaku materials to upgrade the Bone Bludgeon again into a Kulu Beak 1. Kuluyaku also has a unique piece of armor that will be useful for a few of the Canteen quests, and the Zora Magdaro set piece battle later. The Kulu Vambraces have Pro Transporter which makes carrying herbivore eggs, or cannonballs, a lot less tedious. This is a nice pickup if you can spare the materials, but it should only be used during quests where you need to deliver eggs, or against Zora Magdaros. Stick with the Guardian set otherwise. The Kulu Beak will have to tide you over for a little while. Continue onwards and hunt Puki Puki in the next assigned quest, Urgent Puki Puki Hunt. Puki Puki doesn't have any useful gear for you as a hammer user, but it has a good upgrade for your Palico. If you get a poison sack from your assigned hunt, use it to forge a feline Puki bow for your Palico. Your Palico isn't overly useful for dealing damage, but with a status weapon, it can and will reliably inflict that status throughout hunts. Generally, you don't want to commit to a status weapon for yourself, as raw or elemental weapons will deal more damage over the course of the hunt than things like poison will deal. Giving your Palico a poison weapon is a great way to up its damage potential and take advantage of the poison status. There are a few paralysis weapons for Palicos that are in a similar situation, but they're not as reliable to get. They require rare bugs from the Ancient Tree. You'll get some eventually, but it may take a little while. I would strongly recommend poison weapons for your Palico, however. Anytime a monster is a required hunt, but doesn't provide us with useful materials for weapons or armor, you can safely use it to upgrade your Palico's gear should you choose. I will outline a few upgrades during this guide, but anytime that you choose, you can give your Palico a gear upgrade. Palico gear is mostly linear, armor and resistance gains the higher tier monsters get, so it's not much to really think about. Basically just give your cat a weapon with poison, and whatever armor that you see fit. Now after Pookie Pookie, you'll get access to a new locale, and you'll get your next assigned quest in Wildspire Wastes for the best kind of quest to hunt a Baroth. Baroth has a decent offering with the Carapace Sledge 1. You can build it now, but it's very close in power to the Kulu Beak 1. The path is simple. Build a new Bone Bludgeon 1 and upgrade it to a Bone Bludgeon 2. Then upgrade it again into a Carapace Sledge 1. You should build this, as it's very good later, but for now, shelf it and stick with the Kulu Beak 1. Once that's finished, follow up with Sinister Shadows of the Swamp to hunt a Juratotus. Next up is the assigned quest, Flying Sparks, Toby Kadachi. Toby Kadachi unfortunately has no offerings for us while we're using a hammer. Next up is Anjanath for the assigned quest, The Encroaching Anjanath. The Anjanath Hammer is a decent offering in this early stage, but it's not worth farming as it leads to a dead-end path. Afterwards, you'll have to do the first Zora Magdro set piece with the assigned quest, one for the history books. This is basically a sure win, and you should be able to complete it without much input at all. After Zora Magdros, you'll gain access to a new locale, the Coral Highlands. This new area has several new tiers of upgrade materials. First up, you should mine in Expedition Mode to get access to Dragonite Ore. Once you get 3 Dragonite Ore, you should upgrade your Carapace Sledge 1 into a Carapace Sledge 2. At this point, you should switch from the Kulu Beak 1 to the Carapace Sledge 2 as the damage output is higher, even with the negative affinity. Once you gain access to Dragonite Ore, the second piece of low rank gear that's advantageous to get are the High Metal Greaves. These provide heavy artillery. These are only useful during the Zora Magdro set piece when you gain access to cannons and ballistas. They are easy to build, but again, 
should only be used during the Zora Magdros battle at the very end of low rank. Stick with the Guardian set for everything else. After your mining adventure has ended, you'll want to continue with your assigned quests. Complete ballooning problems to hunt a Paolumu, followed by Radaban Roadblock in the new locale, the Rotten Vale. Radaban is mandatory, but it has some options for you. Well, more accurately, your Palico. The Feline Bond Ball is a sleep weapon which is a reasonable alternative to a poison weapon. The Radaban Feline gear is pretty convenient to build now as it's an upgrade to the Pookie Pookie gear. Build the Feline Bond Helm and the Feline Bond Suit if you want. You should also be able to pick up a Kitty of the Valley Rod if you've been fertilizing your ancient tree and have found a great hornfly from your harvest box. Paralysis is a nice alternative to poison for your Palico. It's your call what you use. If you prefer the Kulu Beak one, Rataban does gate the upgrades. I don't recommend the Kulu Beak over the Carapace Sledge in low and high rank, but it will make a resurgence in master rank. There is an optional hunt you can do here if you'd like to upgrade your Palico's weapon. I would not bother with this and instead pass it, but you can hunt a Rathian in the optional 4 star quest, Royal Relocation. If you choose, upgrade your Palico's weapon by building a Feline Rathian Rapier. This will be a marginal improvement in your Palico's damage output over the Feline Pookie Bow. The primary damage output will be the poison, so feel free to skip this. Once you're all finished with that, it's time to move on to the next assigned quest, Legiana, Embodiment of Elegance. Continue bashing faces with your Carapace Sledge too. Legiana is the first 5 star monster and that means it will drop Monster Bone Plus in the reward screen at the end of the hunt. For a very brief period, the Thunder Hammer path is technically an upgrade. This is extremely optional, but is technically a higher damage output hammer than the Carapace Sledge 2 for a very brief moment of time. I would personally just stick it out with the Carapace Sledge 2 rather than building another hammer that just kind of dies in high rank. Use the Carapace Sledge 2 for your next assigned quests, Into the Bowels of the Vale to hunt Odegaron, and then Horn Tyrant Below the Sands to hunt a Diablos. Diablos has its own hammer path that doesn't really come into power until high rank when you're geared to the teeth. However, it also has the upgraded materials for your Carapace Sledge 2. Upgrade it now into a Carapace Sledge 3 once you have the required materials from Diablos. Now test your new Carapace Sledge 3 in the next assigned quest, a fiery throne atop the forest to hunt Rathalos. After a fiery throne atop the forest, you'll want to check the provision stockpile vendor. He should now sell armor charms and power charms. You'll want to purchase these as they provide a small, but free, attack and armor bonus just for having them sit in your inventory. These are quite expensive, so if you need to get some money, consider selling some monster materials that you have in excess. I would probably just crush Great Jaggers over and over and sell the materials until you get enough to purchase them both. Alternatively, you can do some of the extra optional quests that come up, such as the quest for hunter tools from the workshop. When you're ready, start your final low rank assigned quest, a colossal task where you'll have to take on Zora Magdaros. Equip the Carapace Sledge 3, Kulu Van Braces, and the High Metal Greaves if you have them, with the rest of your gear filled out with the Guardian Armor set before getting into this battle. You'll lose some defense, but you'll see that that really isn't an issue. The Kulu Van Braces will make your cannonballs easier to transport via increased movement speed from Pro Transporter, and High Metal Greaves will make your cannon and ballista shots deal more damage. This is totally optional and you can safely just stick with the full Guardian set throughout this entire counter if you prefer that. After the hunt is over, you'll get cutscenes and unceremoniously start the next assigned quest, Invader in the Waste, which is just a Pookie Pookie. Or is it? This Pookie Pookie is actually a high rank one and will be deceptively strong. Once you've taken it out, you'll ascend into high rank. In high rank you'll have the option of grinding armor, as it will be significantly closer in defenses to the Guardian armor set. Armor options will be provided for you to use at your discretion, but the Guardian armor set when upgraded with armor spheres is adequate to get through the entirety of high rank relatively painlessly. Every armor piece you build will be rendered obsolete the second you hit master rank, but high rank is still a lengthy section of the game. Make the judgement call yourself. If you're willing to farm these pieces of gear, your skills will be more offense oriented. If you don't care to farm, just stick with the Guardian set all the way to Master Rank. I completed the entirety of low and high rank using exclusively the Guardian armor set with no upgrades, no mantles or specialized tools, and no decorations or charms for this guide. Just for fun I also did most of Master Rank by doing the same thing. No tools, no decorations, and mostly no charms. High rank introduces decorations, as well as alpha and beta versions of armor sets. 
The beta versions have less skills, but have decoration slots available to provide customization. Decorations have a random drop rate, and there is no way to ensure you get any specific decoration. As such, this guide won't list decorations, but I will provide some suggestions for charms and fairly common decorations. The standard attack and critical eye are nice pickups for hammer. If you can push your affinity from negative to neutral or even positive, it will feel much better than getting feeble hits. Other quality of life decorations and charms like speed eating, divine blessing, and stun resistance are nice alternative pickups. Hammers also benefit from stamina management skills like stamina surge and marathon runner, so those are some nice additional pickups. You should try out some variations of skill setups to see what you prefer. Since we had to fight a high rank Pookie Pookie to get into high rank, it's the same situation as the last time we fought one in low rank. There's no gear options for us, so use the materials to upgrade your Palico's weapon and armor. Forge a Feline Pookie Bow Alpha, then a Feline Pookie Hood Alpha, and a Feline Pookie Mantle Alpha. You'll likely get all these materials from your first required hunt. Prioritize the weapon. The first priority in high rank, above all else, is to upgrade your weapons, since we already have a high rank armor set with the Guardian armor. You're definitely going to want to upgrade your low rank weapons to high rank versions as fast as possible. Conveniently, both of our main targets have decent options for weapons and armor. Broth's Broth Breaker is the easiest hammer to build and will likely be your best option. Unfortunately, it has terrible sharpness, which means you're going to be sticking with green sharpness for the majority of high rank. High rank has had its difficulty significantly reduced, so this isn't a big deal, and committing to handicraft this early feels pretty terrible. Back on topic, hunt Broth first and upgrade your Carapace Sledge 3, into a Baroth Breaker 1 once you've gathered the required materials. This will last you a long time in high rank, so you'll want to build this as soon as possible. Afterwards, you can hunt Kulu Yaku and additional Baroth and optional quests to build the Kulu Headpiece Alpha for Weakness Exploit, and the Kulu Male Alpha for Stamina Surge and Critical Eye. Then Baroth's Vambrace's Beta and Greaves Alpha can be nice pickups. For hammer users, the basic Bone Vambraces Alpha are also a nice pickup for Attack and Slugger. Continue with the next assigned quest of Tickled Pink to hunt a high rank Anjanath in Wildspire Wastes. After you've completed the next assigned quest, Old World Monster in the New World, you'll have new upgrade options. Pink Rathian's Wrath Heart Coil Beta has Handicraft on the Waste slot, which can help, but it won't push you into blue sharpness, so it's safe to ignore it. You can also pick up the Wrath Heart Greaves Beta. These aren't useful on their own, but they are good because they have a Tier 2 Decoration slot. If you manage to get a non-elemental boost decoration, you can put it in these boots in the Tier 2 slot. Non-elemental boost is insanely powerful for raw hammers, so you should pick it up and socket it in as soon as possible. Decorations are randomized, but non-elemental boost is fairly common, so you'll likely get one, eventually. If you manage to get a Rathian Spike Plus from your hunt, you can also forge your Palico a new weapon. Forge the Feline Rathian Rapier Alpha, but you shouldn't go too far out of your way for it. Unfortunately, hammers can't cut tails, so getting this from a tail carve isn't feasible. You'll have to get it as a quest reward. With Pink Rathian down, you'll gain access to a new locale, the Elder's Recess. Here you should hunt Gastodons in Expedition Mode because they have part of the upgrade materials for your Baroth Breaker. It would be nice if it was just as easy as hunting a couple of Gastodons for an upgrade, but of course it's not. Now you'll have to harvest even more tracks to eventually take on Nergigante in the assigned quest, A Wound and a Thirst. During this time, you can build some new armor if you choose. You'll definitely want to hunt Diablos for weapon upgrades, and Black Diablos and Rathlos if you're looking for some optional luxury armor upgrades. Start by hunting Diablos in the 7 star quest. Well, that Diablos. Once you've gained the 3 required Diablos Carapace, finally upgrade your Baroth Breaker 1 into a Baroth Breaker 2. Now both of these optional sets should be considered extreme luxury sets. I wouldn't bother farming for this as it will be rendered obsolete in Master Rank, but this is going to be a very strong offense-oriented set. Throughout your hunts, if you found a non-elemental boost decoration, you'll want to use it in your gear as it will provide one of the most impactful single-point damage boosts in the game. If you haven't been so lucky, you can resort to the Diablos 4-piece bonus for non-elemental boost. 
you'll want to farm more Diablos for the Diablos Helm Beta, the Diablos Coil Alpha, and Diablos Greaves Alpha. These have reasonable synergy with Hammer, but you won't get a ton of value out of skills like Critical Draw and Tremor Resistance. This set is entirely to get the 4-piece bonus for non-elemental boost. Now you'll want to farm Black Diablos to build the Diablos Nero Braces Alpha. Focus and Marathon Runner are pretty good skills for Hammer, so these pair together nicely. Diablos and Black Diablos share a set bonus, and that's 4 pieces. You'll get both Bludgeoner and non-elemental boost from wearing these pieces. This 4-piece Diablos set is best paired with the Rathalos Male Beta for level 2 weakness exploit. You should be focusing the vast majority of your attacks on monsters' heads as a hammer user, and since all heads are weak points, this has great synergy with hammer, and it will push your Baroth Breaker 2 into positive affinity when you're bashing faces. If you manage to find a non-elemental boost decoration via your hunts in high rank, you can make a few deviations. You can swap the Diablos Helm Beta for the Rathalos Helm Beta to get a much more valuable attack boost over critical draw. You'll lose the 4-piece non-elemental set bonus and gain critical element, which you will have zero use out of, but that's just a coincidence. You can then swap the Diablos Greaves Alpha for the Ingot Greaves Beta, or the Wrath Heart Greaves Beta depending on your preferences on the skills they offer. These are the only two pairs of boots with a level 2 decoration slot in mid-high rank, and you should put your non-elemental boost decoration into this level 2 slot in your boots of choice. These armor sets will last you to the end of high rank should you choose to build them. The remaining sets from Elder Dragons in high rank are good, but they will be replaced as soon as you enter master rank so it's not worth the time or effort required to build them. Now it's time to take on Nergigante in the assigned quest, A Wound and a Thirst. Nergigante provides the upgrade materials for your hammer. Upgrade the Baroth Breaker 2 into the Baroth Breaker 3 using the Nergigante horn you'll get from breaking the horns. You did break the horns, right? As the flagship monster of base game Monster Hunter World, Nergigante has strong offerings. If you're willing to farm Nergigante, you can build his Nurgle Crusher. This weapon has way better sharpness than the Broth Breaker, with neutral affinity, and it will be a nice option for the final required Elder Dragons for high rank. Unfortunately, it has a little bit of Dragon Element and Elder Seal, which means you can't use non-elemental boost with it. If you don't have a non-elemental boost decoration, then that's not really an issue at all. However, you won't even be able to upgrade to the final tier of the Nurgle Crusher until you're around Master Rank 100, so I would consider this an extremely optional luxury item. It will be nice, but not required for the remaining Elder Dragons. If you'd like to farm Nurgigante for the Nurgle Crusher, you'll need to go through the Ore Path starting with a new Iron Hammer 1, and progressing through to the upgraded Iron Demon, and finally to the Iron Arc Demon 1, before branching down to the Nurgigante Path to build it into a Nurgle Crusher. Now you'll have to hunt the remaining Elder Dragons of high rank in whatever order you choose. Complete the assigned quests Kushala Daura, Dragon of Steel, Teostra the Infernal, and Hellish Fiend Valhazak. Use your Baroth Breaker 3 or the Nurgle Crusher for the remaining 3 fights. They should be fairly comparable damage wise. This is optional, and you can always come back to it after you hit Master Rank since it will make farming easier, but you'll want to hunt a high rank Basil Juice at some point. You've probably seen one at least once during your hunts as he carpet bombs you while you're already preoccupied with another monster. You'll want two Basil Juice Talons. You can combine a Basil Juice Talon and your Power Charm to make a Power Talon. That provides you with a stronger bonus to your attack power. This actually stacks with a Power Charm, so purchase another one from the provision stockpile. Then, upgrade your armor charm in the same way and purchase a second one. You'll want to keep all four of these items in your inventory at all times. Now that that's all taken care of, you'll have to take on the final assigned quest for high rank, Land of Convergence. The Broth Breaker and Nurgle Crusher will be comparable here, so go ahead and use whatever you want to take on Xenojiva. Xenojiva does hold an upgrade to the Nurgle Crusher. If you grinded for it, and got lucky with material drops, you can upgrade it now into the Obliteration's Footfall. This will be a nice upgrade, and it will be helpful immediately in Master Rank, but it should be considered optional. After completing Land of Convergence, you'll have completed the main story of the base game Monster Hunter World, 
and it's time to move on to the expansion content. You'll want to talk to the people around Astera and start the next storyline. Master Rank represents a large difficulty spike. You'll have to fight significantly harder monsters and deal with harsher environments. Nothing has really changed equipment-wise, it's the same style of progression, besides a new tier of sharpness. You won't have seen white, and you've only gotten a taste of blue in high rank because of the speed that we advanced through it. White is fairly common on most of the good weapons in Master Rank, but purple is the true final tier. The damage bonus from purple sharpness is not nearly as significant as it used to be in previous games, so using exclusively white sharpness is more than acceptable. There are still alpha and beta versions of Master Rank armor, and just like in high rank, the beta versions provide more slots for decorations. You're probably better off just going with the beta versions of armor across the board, but you'll have to make a judgement call yourself depending on your decoration setups. Alpha will have more skills, beta will have less skills, but more slots for customization. Master Rank introduces level 4 decorations which feature multiple skills, such as attack slash free meal in one decoration. These level 4 decorations are quite common, so building a beta piece over an alpha one is generally recommended at this point. Moving forward, I would generally suggest prioritizing the following skills via your decoration slots if you have them. These decorations are fairly common as level 1 decorations and in level 4 decorations. Speed eating at level 3 is super useful, as it allows you to chug mega potions insanely fast, which can and will prevent you from carting. The other skill I'd recommend taking is stun resistance. A lot of monsters in Master Rank are fast, strong, and combo heavy. Getting stunned in Master Rank is a death sentence, and stun resistance is easy to incorporate, so I do like to prioritize it. Speed eating and stun resistance have a pretty nice synergy in that you can tank a hit, get up, and chug a mega potion, then immediately tank another hit without carting or getting stunned. Monsters like Tigrex are extremely fast and will combo you easily. Having stun resistance level 3 to eliminate stuns, and speed eating level 3 for faster heals between hits are both extremely welcome. Free meal is also usually a freebie in a lot of cases, and it gives you a 25% chance to not consume an item when you use it. I incorporate these skills into nearly all of my sets, either via decorations, the armor skills themselves, or from charms. For charms, I generally consider it a wild card. It's a bonus way to get an extra skill. As stated previously, speed eating and stun resistance are really nice if you don't get them via gear or decorations. I personally use a lot of charms against specific monsters like the Sleep Charm vs Nightshade Palumu and the Miasma Charm vs Black Veil Valhazak. That way I just swap my charm depending on the hunt and don't have to worry about swapping decorations to incorporate a skill I want versus certain monsters. I do personally advocate these kind of adjustments for individual monsters, especially because Master Rank's difficulty is substantially higher than low and high rank. Make the judgement call yourself. Everyone seems to kind of favor this all in on the damage output, but a lot of the defensive skills or quality of life skills are just really nice to have. Divine Blessing on your charm may harm your potential damage output, but what's the point of running a meta build if you're failing hunts? After a certain point, I do recommend the Adamantine and Razor Sharp charms. These are just quest rewards, so they're pretty much free, and they're extremely useful for general purpose hunting for a hammer. But it's your call which charms and decorations that you use. Back on track, your immediate goal in Master Rank is to do the quest line after beating Xenogiva to get your new hub, Celiana, established. Just follow the quest line and you'll end up having to fight a Beatotus for the assigned quest, Baptism by Ice, in the new locale, Horfrost Reach. Beatotus will actually be quite difficult and long in your current gear setup, but that's going to change shortly. Use your Brothbreaker 3 or the Obliteration's Footfall for this hunt. After beating Beatotus and returning to Celiana, you should do the rounds and talk to everyone in your new hub. The Elder Melder should be your first target. She'll give you the optional quest for The Great Jagras Returns. You're probably feeling the weakness of your weapons at this point, so it's a good idea to get an immediate upgrade. You can do expeditions and just focus on mining in Horfrost Reach and other areas until you get the required ores to build a Kurogane 1. This is a nice entry-level hammer to get you started. However, the Baroth Breaker 3 or Obliteration's Footfall will work in a pinch. You have a choice to make here regarding armor. You can continue to hunt Beatotus to build its set which has earplugs, which is actually pretty nice for hammer. Or you can hunt Great Jagras or its set to give you an easy baseline set. I would strongly recommend hunting Great Jagras until you can build its entire armor set. It works as a very good baseline for getting started in Master Rank. The improved defenses alone will make going back and farming monsters significantly less dangerous. It also has some nice quality of life skills like speed eating and free meal. Great Jagras is also an insanely easy hunt, so it's quick to build a full set of its gear. 
I would recommend you just build the alpha version in this case. If you're coming from the end game of Monster Hunter World and are equipped with Arc Tempered Elder Dragon gear, you'll likely be able to hang on to it for a little while. Every Master Rank armor set will greatly outclass even the best high rank armor in terms of defenses. You'll have to upgrade eventually, and you'll probably really start to feel it around the time you have to hunt a Berioth. Now with entry level master rank weapons and armor, it's a good time to do some further customization and get a much needed weapon upgrade. Baroth's hammer is decent, but I personally think the Kulu hammer makes a resurgence here mostly because of its natural white sharpness and high positive affinity. Hunt Kulu Yaku in master rank to forge the Maklab Al Nasser 1. This can be built outright, or you can upgrade from your Kulu Beak 1 from way back from the start of the game. Personally, I would just build it outright and save the trouble of getting more low and high rank materials. Kurogane 1 has more raw damage, roughly equivalent sharpness, and two decoration slots. I personally prefer the MacLab Al Nasser 1 because 25% affinity is like having level 5 critical eye, which is equivalent to 5 level 1 decoration slots. You use whatever you prefer though. Unfortunately, Baroth's hammer kind of dies in master rank. Your Baroth breaker has served you faithfully. It's time to retire it. Let it live out its remaining days in peace in your equipment box. Now, for armor customization. The Kulu Yaku chest armor is pretty nice. It provides critical eye and stamina surge. If you have a level 4 decoration at this point that you like, or one that has critical eye, build the beta version. Otherwise, go ahead and stick with alpha. I personally really like Baroth's Greaves. You'll get level 2 stun resistance and marathon runner with some slots in the alpha version. The beta version has level 2 stun resistance and a lot of slot options for you. Stun resistance is insanely nice to have in master rank, especially as you're learning the new, faster monsters, so these are a nice pickup. Baroth's Vambrace's Beta Plus are also a nice pickup for Marathon Runner and Decoration slots. The alpha version has Guard, which you'll get no use out of with a hammer, so if you build these, build the beta version. The Hornetar Coil Beta Plus is also a nice piece of gear for weakness exploit. Stacking more affinity once you've hit positive doesn't feel very impactful unless you're going for a lot of critical synergy skills. It's a decent pickup and an easy build, however. Just like in high rank, the Bone Vambrace's Alpha Plus are a nice pickup for slugger and attack bonuses. If you prefer the skills on Beatotus' gear, it's a good alternative to the Jagger set as a baseline. If you're going for Beatotus, you'll want to go 3 piece for level 5 earplugs. As an option, you can build the High Metal Helm Beta Plus for Ice Resistance over Polar Mobility. This has superior socket options, so it is a stronger option than the Bio Helm Alpha Plus. You can swap out the Bio Chest for the Kulu Chest to get additional Critical Eye, since you'll get no value out of Ice Attack. Then you can swap the Vambraces for Bone or Baroth, depending on your preferences. Once you're ready, continue with your next assigned quest of Banbaro Blockade. Use your new MacLab Al Nasser 1. Banbaro's gear looks awesome, but it's unfortunately pretty terrible for Hammer. You can forge new Palico gear using the Banbaro material since there really isn't any use for them otherwise. Forge the Feline Banbaro Hood Alpha Plus and the Feline Banbaro Suit Alpha Plus before moving on. If you want to as well, you can go ahead and hunt a Master Rank Rathian to build the Feline Rathian Rapier Alpha Plus, which should tide you over for Palico gear for the majority of Master Rank. Next, complete the next assigned quest, ready to strike, to hunt a Viper Toby Kadachi. Viper Toby Kadachi inflicts paralysis and poisons, so be prepared with antidotes. If you can socket in paralysis resistance via decorations or your charm, I would actually do it here. Poison isn't overly scary, and antidotes are easy to come by, but being immune to both poison and paralysis will really trivialize this fight. For gear options, you can build the Vespoid Coil Alpha Plus and Vespoid Greaves Alpha Plus, which will provide you level 3 paralysis resistance. This will make you immune to Viper Toby Kadachi's paralysis shenanigans. If you can be immune to both poison and paralysis, Viper Toby Kadachi is a joke of a fight. Next up is the assigned quest, No Time for Naps, to hunt Nightshade Palumu. Just like with Viper Toby Kadachi, Nightshade Palumu is mostly more annoying than difficult. 
You can spam energy drinks to stay awake, or you can ignore the gimmick entirely by incorporating level 3 sleep resistance into your set. You can build the sleep charm and upgrade it to level 3 by using Rataban and Uragan materials from high rank. The next alternative is by using sleep resistance decorations if you happen to have some on hand. Finally, you can hunt Zitsi Yaku and Rataban in Master Rank and build the Zitsi Greaves Beta Plus and Bond Coil Alpha Plus for easy access to Sleep Resistance Level 3. I would consider this optional, and ideally I would just use the Sleep Resistance Charm or Decorations in a pinch. Continue with your next assigned quest with Play Both Ends for Coral Puki Puki, then follow it up with Blizzard Blitz to hunt Baryoth. Now Baryoth's set is not the greatest for Hammer, but you can pair some of its offerings to make a maximum knockout set. You can build the Baryoth Vambraces Beta Plus and the Baryoth Greaves Beta Plus. These will unlock Baryoth's two-piece set bonus of Punishing Draw. Punishing Draw isn't that great of a skill for Hammer since if everything's going according to plan you won't sheath your weapon that often, but it can add a little bit of extra power if you do an unsheath attack or charge your hammer out of sheath. If you prefer to use the Kuragane, you can upgrade it to a Kuragane 2 after Baryoth by using Monster Slog Bones. You may have to hunt multiple Baryoth to get enough materials to upgrade, but you can always just move on to the next assigned quests, as they also reward monster slog bones. You'll want to get a mid-tier Master Rank armor set coming up, and there are a few options moving forward. You'll only really want to get one of these. Nargakuga's set has stamina management skills such as stamina surge, and the three-piece set bonus is true razor sharp, which effectively doubles your weapon's sharpness. This is a nice set for Hammer, especially because the base sharpness of most Hammers is pretty terrible. You'll rely a lot on evading while using a Hammer as well, so evade window and stamina management skills are all pretty nice. The other alternative is Diablos' set, just like from high rank. This set has more of a focus on maximizing your Hammer's knockout power via Slugger. It has some reasonable skills for Hammer besides Slugger though. First things first, regardless of your armor choice and preferences, you'll want to hunt Nargakuga anyways. Hunt Nargakuga in the next assigned quest, Ever Present Shadow. Prioritize upgrading your weapon, and then you can choose to continue hunting Nargakuga to build its set if that's the one you want. Once you have two Nargakuga Hard Fangs, upgrade your Maclab Al Nasser 1 to Maclab Al Nasser 2. This is the final upgrade for the Kulu Path. Again, if you're using the Kuragane, upgrade it to Kuragane 2 by using Monster Slog Bones. You should have enough after beating this first assigned Nargakuga, if you didn't get enough from your first assigned Baryoth. Nargakuga's hammer is a reasonable option, but it's more for endgame, as it has natural purple sharpness. The damage will be lower than the other options here, but if you have a protective polish decoration to hang on to that purple sharpness, it can be a reasonable option. If you build this hammer now, you should shelf it immediately, because the Maclab Al Nasser 2 and Kuragane 2 will be stronger options. You have to forge a Beyond Fiore using high rank Puki Puki materials, and build through this path to the Master Rank version, then branch down to the Nargakuga tree and upgrade it into a Hidden Breaker. Here I would strongly consider building Nargakuga's set. The helm is not good for Hammer, so stick with the Great Jagras Helm Alpha Plus, and then build the chest, hands, waist, and or legs. The Alpha version of most of the Narga set is pretty terrible, and the Beta versions are just much better, so I would recommend those. You'll want to mix and match to get the three-piece set bonus here. Now with a new weapon, it's a good time to tackle Diablos if you would prefer to maximize your knockout power. Use the optional quest, Master Rank 3 Star, a line in the sand to hunt Diablos. You'll want to build the head, chest, and waist to unlock the three-piece set bonus of Slugger's secret. You won't get max level Slugger by using the Diablos Helm Alpha Plus, the Diablos Male Beta Plus, and the Diablos Coil Beta Plus, but you can socket it in via decorations. You'll have additional slugger options once you've hunted Black Diablos. You can pair this with the Baryoth Hands and Feet for Punishing Draw and some Stamina Management skills. You can try to push to level 5 slugger with decorations or your charm as well. Afterwards, you'll have to tackle the next assigned quest, the Scorching Blade, where you'll hunt a Glavinus. Glavinus is a decent set with lots of maximum might and handicraft. These are good pickups to help extend your sharpness, and you can incorporate it into the Nargakuga Razor Sharp set if you want an upgrade. You'll never hit purple sharpness with the Maclab Al Nasser 2, but the more sharpness you add, the longer your white sharpness will last. The helmet is a decent pickup for a stack of focus and handicraft, but it does require a rare mantle. I would recommend getting it if you're willing to farm. 
Focus is kind of a point of contention for hammer users. If you have focus, it can be more difficult to get the charged uppercut easily. You can feel free to skip this helmet if you don't want focus on your hammer. Now onto your next assigned quests. Absolute power to hunt a Tigrex, followed by a smashing cross counter to hunt a Brachydeos. There are some extra options here depending on your preferences. The Tigrex hammer is actually a decent pickup. You'll lose some raw damage initially and go into negative affinity, but you'll gain a ton more white sharpness. That may be worthwhile depending on your preferences. You'll likely need to hunt some high and master rank Rataban to work through this tree. Start by forging a Bond Strike 1 outright, then upgrading it through to the master rank version, Bond Gavel 1. Then branch down to the Tigrex tree and upgrade it into a Striped Striker. If you want a quality of life set, the Tigrex set is pretty well rounded. It has earplugs, attack, and speed eating with level 3 free meal via the set bonus, Free Meal Secret. Level 3 free meal means 75% of the time your consumables just won't get consumed when you use them. It's a nice mid-master rank upgrade to your earplug set if you've been using the Beatotis gear. It's also a nice option if you're going to play online and you can incorporate wide range level 5 via your charm or from decorations. Running around chugging mega potions to heal your teammates who refuse to do it themselves is actually an extremely viable strategy when hunting online. Remember, it doesn't have to be pretty, all that matters is that you complete the hunt. For this set, you should just go all in for level 5 earplugs. Alpha helmet and beta everything else can work if you have free meal decorations to take advantage of the set bonus. After the assigned quest, you should get an optional room quest for the perfect room stone from the feline attendant in your room. You'll have to work through all the optional quests until this one becomes available. Once you complete it, you'll get the Adamantine Charm, which provides bludgeoner and non-elemental boost. This is actually a great pickup if you don't have a non-elemental boost decoration yet, and bludgeoner works well on the MacLab Al Nasser 2 because of its low white sharpness. Feel free to use this charm if you want. Then, it's time to take on Brachydeos in the next assigned quest, a smash and cross counter. Once you've cleared both those big boy bruisers, you'll get to face off against the jobber version of Velcana. This is immediately followed up with the assigned quest, When the Mist Taketh You, then in parentheses, Shrieking Legiana, which is actually in expedition mode. After maybe one of the worst Legiana fights you've ever had, you'll gain access to a new tier of monsters, and they provide some decent upgrades. Shrieking Legiana's Horcry Greaves Beta Plus are a nice option for Marathon Runner Level 2 on your foot slot. You may want to pick those up if you're willing to hunt multiple Shrieking Legiana. I personally would prefer not to hunt any more of those. You'll also be able to hunt Black Diablos in the optional Master Rank 4 Star Quest in the heat of the moment after Shrieking Legiana. Here you can use Black Diablos materials to upgrade the Striped Striker if that's your preferred hammer. Use Black Curl Stout Horns to upgrade the Striped Striker into the Striped Striker Plus. If you want some alternatives to the Diablos set, you can look at the Diablos Nero Coil Beta Plus to trade Marathon Runner for Slugger. You can also look at the Diablos Nero Bracers Beta Plus for Slugger and Marathon Runner on your hand slot. But in doing so, you'll break your two-piece Baryoth set bonus if that matters to you. These pair nicely with the Horcry of Greaves Beta Plus and Glavinous Helm Beta Plus. The next assigned quest is the Thunderous Troublemaker to hunt Fulgur Anjnath. If you built Nargakuga's Hammer, you can upgrade your Hidden Breaker into a Hidden Breaker Plus by using three Fulgur Anjnath Fangs. This also requires a Nargakuga Mantle, so it will take some additional farming. After Fulgur Anjnath, head back to the Rotten Vale for the assigned quest, the Disintegrating Blade. This is a special note, Acidic Glavinus's gear is decent and has a lot of handicraft. The choices in this initial part of the guide are designed to be usable without handicraft, and instead rely on Razor Sharp, which makes most of the gear fairly lackluster. However, its helmet has level 2 effluvia resistance, which is very useful for hunting Black Veil Volhazak. If you don't have access to 3 effluvia resistance decorations, I would strongly recommend building the Acidic Glavinous Helm Alpha Plus. You can pair this with a single effluvia resistance decoration, or another piece of gear to become immune to Valhazak's maximum HP reduction, which turns him into a joke of an Elder Dragon. 
Unfortunately, in a cruel twist of fate, the Miasma Charm at level 3 requires Black Veil Valhazak materials. The Acidic Glavinous Hammer is the strongest per hit raw hammer in the game when you take full advantage of it by going all out on the attack skills with maximum handicraft. It does become available right now, but you won't have the set to take full advantage of it for some time, so feel free to come back to this later. Start by forging a Diablo Shatterer 1 outright, then upgrade it to a Shatterer 2, followed by the Master Rank version, Diablo Shatterer 3. Now branch down to the Acidic Glavinous Tree and upgrade it into a Sulfurtine Alkan. Shelf this for now and continue with the MacLab Al Nasser 2 or the Striped Striker Plus. These work better as gear independent hammers. Acidic Glavinous being unlocked should also unlock another tier of room quests to capture an Acidic Glavinous. Completing the room quest, optional master rank 4 star, the perfect room light iron, should reward you with not only room decorations, but also the incredibly valuable razor sharp charm. Talk to the feline attendant in your room and complete all the quests you're given until this one finally comes up. The razor sharp charm is insanely useful and will be a good option depending on your decorations and set choices. You should pick this up as soon as possible. If you're using the Nargakuga set, you can choose to adjust your set and use the razor sharp charm or focus on a different charm and maintain the three piece bonus from Nargakuga. Back on track, it's time for the next assigned quest. Bad friends, great enemies to hunt Ebony Odegaron. Just hunt it and move on. It doesn't have any really good offerings for Hammer. Now, it's finally time to take on Velcana. First, you'll get a set piece battle in the assigned quest, the defense of Seliana, and then you'll have to hunt it for real in the next assigned quest, the Iceborne Wyvern. Velcana as the flagship monster has strong offerings, but not really for Hammer. Valkana's Ice Shaker is decent, but it will be outclassed by a raw hammer with non-elemental boost while also being type independent. The two-piece set bonus is Critical Element, which you'll get zero use out of while you're using the superior raw hammers. The four-piece set bonus of Frostcraft is actually very strong, but you'll sacrifice a lot of attack, defense, and utility skills that hammer wants to get it. If you're still using the Kuragane, the final upgrade tier becomes available here by using pure dragon blood from Elder Dragons. I would personally not bother with this as the other offerings are stronger at this point in the game, unless you really want two level 1 decoration slots for whatever reason. You'll gain access to the Dober Male Beta Plus and Dober Coil Alpha Plus after you beat Valkana and get some large Elder Dragon Bones. Hey, are you an archaeologist? Cause I've got a large Elder Dragon Bone for you to examine. I would look into this exclusively for Black Veil Valhazak coming up soon. After Velkana is down, you have the ability to hunt Elder Dragons via repeatable optional quests. If you're using the Striped Striker Plus, start by fighting a Master Rank Kushala Daura. Use the Master Rank 5 star optional quest, Wings of the Wind, or any investigations you may have involving Kushala Daura. Once you have the required Daura Hard Claws, upgrade your Striped Striker Plus into a Tigrex Hammer. This is a very strong offering with a ton of white sharpness, so it's nice if you're not running razor sharp or don't have a sharp jewel. If you're using the Kuragane 3 or the MacLab Al Nasser 2, I would strongly consider switching to the Tigrex hammer at this point due to its much higher white sharpness. Teostra has a strong offering for endgame builds. You'll want to fight Teostra in the Master Rank 5 star optional quest, Mark of the Sun or via any investigations you may have involving Teostra. These quests cycle, so you may have to come back and check periodically. Teostra's three-piece set bonus is Master's Touch. This makes it so when you land a critical hit, your weapon won't lose sharpness. This is a strong option for sharpness management, but Razor Sharp via the charm is usually adequate for most hammers and general purpose hunting. Your best options are the Kaiser Crown Beta Plus, Kaiser Vambraces Beta Plus, and Kaiser Coil Beta Plus to unlock Master's Touch via the three-piece set bonus. This is a reasonable option, as with Weakness Exploit and Maxed Out Critical Eye, you can maintain near 100% purple sharpness with the Acidic Glavinous Hammer once you have a full handicraft setup and maxed out augments. Back on track, the next assigned quest is the second coming to hunt a literally seething basil juice. Master rank basil juice has a nice two piece set. If you have a single earplug decoration, the Pride Helm Beta Plus and Pride Greaves Alpha Plus make a very easy maxed out earplugs. You'll also get the two piece set bonus of guts, which is much more valuable in master rank than in high rank. Earplugs is really nice on hammer as you can really capitalize on monster roars to get some strong knockout damage in. 
Now, for the next assigned quest, Under the Veil of Death to hunt Black Veil Valhazak. As stated earlier in the guide, Effluvia Resistance completely changes the game with Black Veil Valhazak. I would make some modifications to your gear loadout to equip the Acidic Glavinous Helm Alpha Plus and the Dober Mayo Beta Plus to get level 3 Effluvia Resistance. With level 3 Effluvia Resistance, you'll never get your maximum HP halved by Valhazax Miasma. This two-piece gear setup is the most consistent way to get level 3 Effluvia Resistance if you don't have decorations. Once you get the Miasma Charm to level 3, I would resort to that instead for when you have to hunt Valhazak. Black Veil Valhazak has the final upgrade materials for your yet unused Sulfurtine Alkin, and Hidden Breaker Plus if that's your current hammer of choice. Once you have two Valhazak Hard Claws, upgrade the Sulfurtine Alkin into the Grinding Mallet. This will be the strongest per hit hammer in the game once you have the augments, armor, and decorations to back it up. Then you can upgrade your Hidden Breaker Plus into a Knight Eternal once you get two Shadow Pierce Fangs. If you build the Knight Eternal, it will be comparable to the Tigrex Hammer and MacLab Al Nasser 2. It's really your call which one you use at this point. If you have a protective polish decoration, Knight Eternal is a strong contender because you can hang on to its natural purple sharpness longer. I don't know, maybe you decide to go back and do some Teostra investigations from high rank, you know, and maybe it just shows up, you know, after 730 hours, it just shows up. Black Veil Valhazak's Dragon Element Hammer is the best Dragon Elemental Hammer in the game. That's unfortunately a little bit like being the sharpest pair of safety scissors. I would skip it and don't think twice about it. Stick with raw hammers. They're stronger and type independent. Remember, everything is weak versus raw damage. The next assigned quest is A Light from the Abyss, where you'll have to fight a new Elder Dragon, Namiel. Namiel's Aqua Fluorescence is the best and only water hammer, but again, you definitely want to be using a raw hammer. After Namiel, it's the final assigned quest of the main story. You'll want to complete, to the guided, a pain to hunt a total jobber version of Ruiner Nergigante. And finally, pain of guidance to hunt Shara Ishvalda. Shara Ishvalda is a reasonable fight for a hammer, you can nail the head with a golf swing if you time it right, but you'll still need to rely on the clutch claw and slinger ammo to get a lot of your damage in. Hammer does have a lot of potential for knockouts which can lead into opportunities for scalp breaks, especially if you socket in part breaker. You'll want to break the scalp for gems and tender plates which you'll need if you want to actually build Shara Ishvalda's gear. Shara Ishvalda's offerings are reasonable options for hammer. The weapon is a nice vanity item while also being a strong hammer when paired with level 5 handicraft. You'll definitely want the Razor Sharp Charm or Sharp Jewel in conjunction with level 5 Handicraft when you use this hammer. You'll have to start back at the Dragon Bone Tree with the Dragon Bone Basher 1 and work your way to the Dragon Seal Basher 1, then branch down to the Shara Ishvalda Tree and upgrade it into Dawning Tranquility. With this hammer you can now utilize the secret technique, the Buddhist Palm Descending from Heaven. The armor is interesting, as the 5 piece set bonus effectively turns every single one of your mantles into a rock steady mantle. This means you can use a mantle with a very high uptime with powerful sockets like the glider mantle plus to really abuse the true Gaia's veil effect. Your mileage with this will probably vary but it's a nice set for farming horns from monsters because of part breaker and the set bonus, or for helping friends out. It's a nice alternative to an earplug set since every mantle you wear will provide you with the earplugs effect. I would strongly recommend using the excess materials from Shara Ishvalda to give your feline companion a new set of armor for an improvement to its overall defenses. The limiting factor in all Shara Ishvalda gear is tender plates and gems which largely only come from breaking its scalp and carving it or extremely rarely from quest rewards. This means all your boulder plates, tender scales and the like are mostly just going to be taking up space in your item box waiting for a tender plate or a gem to come by. Go ahead and build the Feline Ishvalda Crown Alpha Plus and Feline Ishvalda Raiment Alpha Plus so your Palico can reach spiritual enlightenment. Once you get into the Guiding Lands after beating Shara Ishvalda, you'll have a few immediate goals. The Guiding Lands may as well have been called the Augment Lands or the Grinding Lands because they exist almost solely to give you some final customization options for your weapons. 
You'll want to run around the guiding lands hunting monsters to level up the areas and gathering from bone piles and mineral deposits to be able to max out your weapons and armor via augment materials you find there. In the guiding lands, focus your efforts on leveling up the Rotten Vale area. Eventually, you'll encounter Brute Tigrex once you've maxed it out. Brute Tigrex's gear is nice as a general purpose hunting set, but you'll want to build a few pieces like the chest because of its great attack and weakness exploit focus. You will need to do several assigned quests on your way to Master Rank 100. Eventually you'll come across Yan Garuga in an assigned quest. The most notable piece of the Yan Garuga gear are the Greaves Beta. These have level 2 critical eye and a level 4 decoration slot and two level 2 decoration slots. These are easily one of the best pieces of footwear in the game and tie well with almost every set. It's a great combo piece with 3 piece Teostra because of synergy with Master's Touch. Yan Garuga also holds a new kind of side grade for your Palico. The Feline Garuga Fan Alpha Plus has less poison buildup, but significantly higher damage output than the Feline Rathian Rapier, so I would pick it up. Rajang will become available after some time spent in post game. Rajang has a decent set, but it isn't anything overly special as it's not used in a maximum damage output build or a quality of life set. Rajang's hammer is a powerhouse, but again, it's more of a side grade. It requires Handicraft, and its Thunder Element prevents you from maximizing its damage via non-elemental boost. The Acidic Glavinus and Shara Ishvalda Hammers will largely have you covered for general purpose hunting when you're using Handicraft, so you can build it as kind of a vanity item if you want. It does have a pretty sick charge up effect, which is pretty unique in Monster Hunter World's sea of super bland weapon designs. Finally, after hitting Master Rank 100, you'll be able to hunt Ruiner Nergigante for real. Ruiner Nergigante's set is not bad for Hammer, as a final earplug set. You can pair 2-piece Basil Juice with 2-piece Ruiner Nergigante to get the Haste and Recovery set bonus, and Guts, with maximum earplugs and some nice skills like Stamina Surge with socket options. It's a pretty convenient set for versatility. Ruiner Nergigante's Hammer upgrade is also noteworthy as a gear-independent Hammer. The Ruinous Obliteration is technically a Dragon Hammer, so you won't be able to benefit from non-elemental boost, but it's naturally high raw and maximum white sharpness make it a very nice pickup for a non-handicraft, general purpose hunting set. It's a great pickup if you want more utility or defensive skills while maintaining great offensive power. You won't need Master's Touch, Handicraft, Razor Sharp, or Protective Polish when you're using this hammer, which really diversifies your skill options. After that's all done, you're back off to the Guiding Lands to continue farming for Augment Materials and Decorations. It's just a matter of hunting everything indiscriminately and harvesting all the materials you can see. You can use the Elder Melder to swap some materials for other ones if you're short on specific upgrade materials, but it kinda depends. Congratulations, that's your endgame. Slot Machine Progression reigns supreme once again. Pray every day for beautiful decorations that you'll never get. This first set is an early endgame setup that is easy to build. It does require one earplug decoration which you should socket into the Pride Greaves Alpha to get level 5 earplugs. I do think earplugs is probably one of the nicest skills to have on Hammer as it allows you free damage on the head for most monsters. Filling the rest of the set out with Diablo's pieces is nice for the level 5 slugger. You'll want to socket in an elementless decoration into the Diablo's Nero Braces Beta Plus. It will be one of the most impactful uses of that level 2 decoration slot. The rest of the set is customizable and you can put in whatever skills that you want or need in there. You won't really need Razor Sharp or Protective Polish while you're using the Tigrex Hammer, but if you're using Nargakuga's Knight Eternal and you were just so happened to be lucky enough to get a Sharp Jewel from clearing out your high rank Tempered Elder Dragon investigations like this boy, then that's a nice alternative pickup. Now I don't quite have the required charms and decorations for this, but basically you're looking at maxing out Handicraft to gain purple sharpness on the grinding mallet. Then you're looking at maximizing affinity via augments and skills like Critical Eye and Weakness Exploit to get as close to 100% affinity as possible to maintain that purple sharpness via Master's Touch. You can incorporate a Protective Polish decoration into this set to have a similar effect. This will be one of the highest damage output builds in the game, but it feels very limiting. Alternatively, you can make some adjustments and use Protective Polish via a Sharp Jewel instead of using the 3-piece bonus from Teostra, but that's your preference and much more decoration dependent.
This final set is much more customizable. It's an endgame earplug set that will give you both Basil Juice's two-piece set bonus of Guts and Ruiner Nurgigante's two-piece set of Haste and Recovery with level 5 earplugs without requiring a decoration. The gloves here are kind of a wild card and you can use whatever gloves you see fit. This is a nice setup and you can customize it as you see fit because you don't need handicraft, razor sharp, or protective polish while using Ruiner Nurgigante's Ruinous Obliteration. The raw damage is high and you won't be forced into an elementalist decoration either because of the innate dragon element on it. The decorations I've put in are just some nice skills like slugger and part breaker but you could incorporate more defensive or offensive skills into this very easily. Your charm with this build is also a wild card so you can get an entire extra skill from that as well. The downside is you'll have to grind to master rank 100 before Ruiner Nurkigante's gear becomes available. But that's just how it goes. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters for their continued support of the channel. It goes a long way. Thank you all. Oof. Two down. Twelve more to go.